first off, thank you so much for coming. We, uh, we kind of play different roles in these things. I'm a comedian, and my job is obviously to make light of all of this, and you're, of course, a defense attorney, and to take it all very seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, the Michael sort of we see is obviously different from the one that you knew quite intimately. Tell mm -hmm. us, we all know the one that we know. Tell us about the one you know. The Michael Jackson I know is a very sensitive, honest, down-to-earth, kind-hearted person. Um, much more simple in his taste than you probably think. Uh, very kind-hearted, loves people, loves to help people who are in trouble. He's too nice to too many people, and that's how he got in the trouble he was in. Right. Um, but he's one of my favorite human beings. He's misunderstood. And one of my jobs in the trial was to make sure the jury understood who he was. And I think they did, and that's why they acquitted him of every count. Now, you, you, you refer to him, and you make this point of innocence versus not guilty. Yes. Explain. Well, he's innocent of these charges, and right. Michael is, is the kind of person when you sit down with him and get to know him and hear his philosophy of life and what he would like to achieve in, in life, you realize he could never hurt a child and he never has hurt a child. Now, thousands and thousands of children and their parents have flocked to Michael Jackson all over the world. A couple suddenly invented some claims and wanted money, mm -hmm. and he made a mistake in the early 90s of paying them money to get rid of them. And it was really insignificant money, given what he, he was making. He's probably grossed over a billion dollars in his life. And all of his business advisors were saying, Michael, you got bigger fish to fry. Just pay whatever it takes. Get rid of these cases. Unfortunately, once he did that, others thought they could get an easy payday, mm -hmm. you know, as well. And uh, hence, he got in this kind of trouble. Do you believe in all your clients? Is that an important part of your defense? Do you, do you personally have to believe, or can you defend someone you don't quite believe, but maybe the letter of the law has been violated. You know what I'm saying? There are two major purposes that I have in my profession. One is to make sure that innocent people like Michael Jackson are not convicted. Mm -hmm. And two, to make sure this system works so prosecutors and cops don't abuse their power, because if you let them do it, they will routinely do it, and they have throughout American history. Now, does it bother you that I think only 34% of the public uh, did not believe the verdict? It does bother me because it's, it, it's a result of spin from the media and not knowing the evidence. Mm -hmm. If you really looked at the evidence in the case, they had nothing. They had absolutely nothing. And networks like Court TV did their best to spin uh, a conviction. But you can't spin a conviction. You've got to have evidence to support it. The evidence wasn't there. Let me ask you about the jury for a second. I know you were instrumental in picking the jury. And, again, I, I've been told this, that Michael was quite concerned that there were no African Americans. On the, I mean, literally, like, what's going on here? Explain. Well, Michael's from a prominent African-American family, and as you would expect, he was hoping to have some African-American representation on the jury. But I've got to tell you, once the jury was picked, I had no problem with this jury. I thought they were very strong-willed, independent-minded people, smart. Nobody was going to push them around, and they were going to follow the law and do the right thing, and that's exactly what they did. So how do you pick a, a jury? I mean, what do, you, what do you look for in a case like this? Because, you know, I have to admit, watching from the sidelines, this one's a parent, three children, this one a, a postal worker possibly or something. And, mm -hmm. Oh, those seem like pretty conservative. This seems like a little out of the mainstream. Uh, uh, I mean, not out of the, you know, not Hollywood kind of wacky, you know. I wasn't worried about conservative people. Santa yeah. Maria is a conservative community. Yeah. Uh, the communities around Santa Maria are conservative. What I wanted were people who I thought were strong-willed, independent-minded, and open to look at the evidence and not be hoodwinked or influenced by outside forces, which were trying to basically spin the case in a way that wasn't realistic. We got some very honorable, courageous people, and they did the right thing. Did it bother you that some of the jurors came out afterwards and said they think he might have been guilty of something in the past, but couldn't prove it this time? Well, they think he might have been. That's like saying, you know, we suspect it, but nothing's ever been proven, because right. nothing was proven. The prosecution, in an act of desperation, tried to say he'd molested people in the past. They mentioned three young men, all of whom came in, one of whom was Macaulay Culkin, and said, nothing ever happened to us. We were not molested. They mentioned a fourth person who never showed up, and they mentioned a fifth person who showed up and said, I was tickled improperly, and I wanted money, and I took it. After denying that it had happened, his mother took money, and she also sold the story to a tabloid. Um, it didn't seem like there were ever any young girls there. I mean, we hear of children going to Neverland, but it all seems to be boys. We're false. Absolutely okay. false. Women testify that they stayed in his room. Okay. And by the way, his room is a two-story duplex, a huge duplex. That's what we call his room. Right. And women stayed there, mothers stayed there, parents stayed there, kids stayed there. 
And any time a child came up to him and said, we want to play in your room, which he has arcade games and that kind of thing, he always said, I want your parents here right now and I want their permission. And the parents were free to stay. And we had parents testify who did stay. So a lot of this was spin by the prosecution because they wanted to try and convict him through spin. They had nothing to, to deal with in the courtroom. Is he childlike? I mean, it's, it's almost hard for me to believe that you can be such a polished entertainer. I mean when you spend time with him, is it like spending time with a child? He is childlike, uh, and he's been very vocal when interviewed about why he's childlike. He had no childhood. He was working clubs at three in the morning when he was a, when he was a very small child. He said he used to gaze at schoolyards and wonder what it was like to be just a spontaneous kid. He couldn't do that. He was disciplined very strictly, and he feels as if he never really had a free and spontaneous childhood. And he also he also is, is just, he feels as if he's been let down by adults most of his life. He was a child, asked to sign papers. He didn't know what money was. All right. his money was spinning all around him. He got taken advantage of, and he has an empathy for children because he thinks children need more attention in the world. He's helped kids with AIDS around the planet. He's helped kids with all sorts of diseases. Uh, Ryan White, the young man who had AIDS and died of it, he took care of him when a little child in, his, uh, in the early 80s was doused with gasoline by his father in Orange oh, County. Yeah. Michael paid his bills. He's paid bills for injured children all around the world. A lot of this the prosecution tried to bury because they wanted to make him look like a monster, and they failed. When that documentary came out, and Michael said about uh, sharing your bed and that type of thing, what should the prosecution have done? I mean, when people say, cause let's say I, I live in a neighborhood and I know there's a 45-year-old man over there. Mm -hmm. I see young boys going in and out or children going in and out. And I hear rumors of alcohol, rumors of pornography, locks on the doors. Should they not have investigated? Well, first of all, w what he said in the documentary was, I gave this child my bed and I slept on the floor. And I've never done anything sexual with a child. That's in the documentary. Okay. There's also some outtakes that were not included in the documentary where he even expanded on that. Right. He said, I would slip my wrist before I would hurt a child. Okay. okay, so the prosecution tried to spin this so that you didn't know that's in the documentary. The second thing is, yes, if you think there is a valid claim of child molestation, you should investigate. And they did. Seventy officers raided Neverland. They couldn't find any forensic evidence to support the claims. No DNA, no hair, no fiber, no fluids, nothing. Is okay? that uncommon? I mean, is, I mean, it, it, it's, well, I'll tell you what, I, I'll tell you what, we'll take a break and we'll follow up in this line of... Uh, sure. Permission to treat him as a hostile witness. Be right back. Tom Mesero, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Talking with Tom Mesereau, the lead defense attorney in the Michael Jackson trial. It's fascinating to hear your side of it. Uh, you, we were just talking about DNA evidence, and you mentioned when they went to the Neverland Ranch, they found not a trace of DNA evidence, no fluids, no hair. No trace. Is, is that, uh, I mean, people who are pedophiles, is, is that common that they would sort of be very careful or, or no? You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the answer to that yeah. is, but certainly they do find in this day and age DNA. Yeah. It's an easy thing to find, and it lasts for, you know, hundreds of years. Yeah. So uh, it's significant. They couldn't find any forensic evidence whatsoever to prove this crime, okay, because the crime didn't, didn't, didn't happen. Let me ask you about the jury. I was uh, sort of stunned to hear the jury was not sequestered, because this is all anybody talks about. And if I'm on that jury and I walk into... McDonald's or anywhere, someone's going to go, hey, you're going to hear something, it's on every TV, mm -hmm. it's on every radio, you hear jokes, you hear information that maybe they shouldn't be privy to. Mm -hmm. Weren't you worried about the... Suppression? I really wasn't. The judge uh, was a very, very good judge. He had the full respect of the jury, mm -hmm. I could tell. And he, had, he told them very clearly, you cannot listen to any media. You cannot expose yourself to any outside influence. You must follow the law and look at the evidence in the courtroom. And in my opinion, sequestered juries tend to be uncomfortable juries. You know, they're confined. They have limitations. People are watching them. Generally, I don't like it. And I really had a feeling they'd be fair, and they were. Yeah. Uh, the media circus, were you uh, surprised at the extent of people hiding in the bushes, seeing what, whether you put two sugars in your coffee in this thing? No, I wasn't surprised. I expected that. Yeah. I mean, this had real international interest. You yeah. know, Michael is a, is a megastar. He is popular all over the world. And we had support all over the world for our side. So I'm not surprised. Now, um, they're not allowed to watch the pundits. But you, when you go home, would you turn it on and see what some of the... Uh, you know, some of the experts were, were saying? Once in a while. I was working very hard. Yeah. You know, normally I read three newspapers a day. I wasn't reading any except on the weekends. Okay. Uh, so once in a while for a break I would. 
And generally, I was pretty unimpressed. Yeah. You know, you have. Were they accurate? Generally, no. Okay. Um, agenda? Did they have an agenda? You oh, mentioned that. Take, take Court TV, for example. Okay. I'd always been a fan of Court TV. I'd always respected Court TV, particularly when Steve Brill was running it. In this particular case, in my opinion, they became a tabloid. They had their own agenda. They misstated the facts. They didn't understand the significance of what was going on in the courtroom. And that's why their major critics were stunned by the verdict and why now they're trying to say there's something wrong with the jury, there's something wrong with the system. They were humiliated because they never really understood what was going on in the courtroom. Now, the district attorney, Snedden, is, is he a fair guy? In my opinion, no. In this particular case, uh, he had a personal vendetta against Michael Jackson. He wasn't objective. He th saw things that didn't exist. When you're not objective, when you're too personally involved, you can really mischaracterize your case, and he mischaracterized his case from day one. I mean, was he person because of the events from 10 years ago? You know, I don't know exactly why he got so interested in, in Michael Jackson, but he flew to Australia at one point in the mid-90s to try and find an alleged victim, and the person said, take a hike, get out of here, you know. Mm -hmm. He uh, had a website at the Sheriff's Department to try and see if he could find witnesses to build a case. It was like an open casting call on Michael Jackson, and the best they could come up with was this family that we thoroughly discredited from yeah. A to Z. From yeah. A to Z. Now, have you talked to Michael since the verdict? Oh, sure. And sure. how's he doing? He's very uh, drained physically and emotionally. He was dehydrated. He had trouble eating and sleeping. Uh, he's going to have to spend time recovering. Let me ask you a question, and this is something I saw people speculate on. Every time it seemed like the trial was going one way or the other, he would go to the hospital. And I don't mean this to be flippant, but there's the umbrella guy and there's a magician. Why isn't there a doctor with him all the time? Why would he have to get up? No, I, I, I'm not being a wise guy. I mean, it seems like in the middle of the night he would be taken to the hospital. I mean, it seems like he could have a staff of physicians there sort of around the clock. No? I, I've never asked him that question. He has had personal physicians certainly in the past. Um, he didn't intend to make these trips to the hospital. He had legitimate physical problems. Okay. I mean, he has a very serious back problem, and he had serious... He really had emotional problems. He had trouble eating and sleeping. Michael was not emotionally built for this kind of a process. Right. Month after month of sitting in a courtroom listening to all this nonsense thrown at you, knowing your life and your freedom are on the line, um, it was a very hard process for him emotionally. Now, I know a, a lot of people have been critical of you, but I know you do an awful lot of pro bono work. Yes, it's I terrific do. within different communities, and, and that, that's, is that why you took this? You saw it as an injustice? I saw it as tremendous injustice. Yes. Um, I had known Randy Jackson for a long time. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, he asked me if I would talk to Michael about his case, and I flew to Florida, met Michael, talked to him extensively about it, and I just very quickly, and I'm a very intuitive person, I said, this cannot be the monster they're portraying. Right. What is this? Because what they were saying was that this kid had cancer and that he intentionally plied him with alcohol so he could molest them. And you get to know Michael and you say, this is absurd. Mm -hmm. They're also saying he masterminded a conspiracy to abduct a family to Brazil. Michael Jackson wouldn't even know how to conceive of such a thing. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson is an artist. He's a creative spirit. He likes to sit in a tree and compose music. <laughs> you know, I mean, and he freely says that. You know, there, there are See, theories. that's where my part comes in, sitting in the tree. And that's, I, have to do, I have to do the sitting in the tree. Yeah, well, he loves there. climbing trees. Well. He says other people like football and baseball. I like climbing trees. He freely admits that. Well, Tom, I appreciate you coming here and tell us your side of the story. Thank you very much. Okay. Thomas Mesereau, be right back with our chopper guys right after this.